to the point after show. He's going savage. Run for your life. And that was a disgraceful performance in my opinion. We threw that game. We gave it away by doing that. We gave him the freaking game. In my opinion, that sucked. Uh, playoffs? What are you talking about? Playoffs? Are you kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. The Point After Show. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The double chance does what the f*** he wants. The Point After Show. Spikes in hell. Spikes in peewee hell. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to episode four of The Point After Show 2.0. I'm here with co-host Ed Scarupa. Paul Lipko and Joe Caviston. Week three of fantasy football is in the books, and we're going to talk about our league a little bit as we always jump into. Smoke, what do you have to say for that team of yours, buddy? My team sucks. Moving that's, on. Next question. That's it. Plain and simple, right? Next, next question. One and two now, the least amount of points scored in our league. You uh, went on a little Trump-like Twitter rant this weekend, uh, all caps, discussing your team and how it was all poop at this point. Cav, I know you were pumped and you were talking a little smack in the fantasy thread this week about Paul having to do the $20 payoff. What's up with that? A little redemption from week one when he snuck one out on me. I appreciate the, uh, the $20 for being the, you know, when you go from, I mean, that week I was the low point scorer to now being the high point scorer. I told you last week on the podcast, I figured my team out. I figured them out, so good to go. You put the right set in the in the roster there and had the nice starting lineup to give you a high point score this week, which is kind of impressive. I think that was uh, kicked off by Alvin Kamara, obviously doing Alvin Kamara type things, getting paid. Kamara icing on the icing on the cake. I already had it locked in by then. Ooh, yeah, Cavi. Ca- uh, me and Cavi played this week, and I knew I was in trouble once Deontay Johnson got a concussion in like early in the f- second quarter of uh, the Steelers game, and he was out. And Cam Newton looked like Cam Diaz friggin' out there. So I knew I was in uh, rough shape with Cavi, with his Jeff Wilsons, and all these other players going off. It was just, it was just a rough week on my end. It was a good good week all around, and I think, you know, everybody gives me – not but everybody. I mean, Paul gives me a lot of shit because I, I've been high on Jamie's team this entire – uh, the Indianapolis Colts defense, the stream, and, uh, you know, running back from Jacksonville blown up again this week. His team looks tough to beat, uh, you know, not, not to be, uh, you know – uh, dad squad, his team is also beast, right? Like he has his two best players out right now with Michael Thomas and Christian McCaffrey, and he's still putting up digits, scoring points, and uh, got another victory this week. What do you guys think the future of our league looks like? Uh, what kind me of a questions champion. That? I don't know. Who, like, I don't know what you want from me. Like, <laughs> are, are we moving more progressive or concerned? I don't know where, where we're going with this. Yeah, you know, what's our platform is what I'm trying to get at. No, is 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 we have know. a platform. That's our platform. I, I was thinking about this today. Um, I was sitting in my office and and I'm looking at you know the fantasy football plaque that sits on our wall here with our league and um, and without the, without your name, right? The one without my name, the perpetual trophy or plaque that does not have my name. But I'm looking at all the the past winners and um, it's kind of it's scary because I look at all the best teams right now that are currently like doing really well in our league and um, everybody's a past champion, which means it could be a second name on that. It could be somebody with a second championship under their belt in our league. Um, we only have one person that's ever been in our league that has two consecutive or two championships. So we're waiting on that next person to get to. I'm still waiting to get one. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully that's me this year. You know, speaking of our league and past champs, there was a little bit of trade controversy in our league today. A lot of people were up in arms. The thread was 140 texts deep by the time I was done taking an eddy. And uh, 
it was unbelievable. So, you know, if, if you listen to this, I'm going to put out a little poll today to see if our, our listeners think this is a fair trade. But it was a T.Y. Hilton and uh, Miles Gaskin running back from the Dolphins for an injured Julio Jones. Uh, it was a 5-4 vote up to the league. But um, it passed on the squad now. And, you know, James M. was hot, hot, trying to build a coalition, the veto coalition that Cavi was part of last year. You know, I, I'd like, again, uh, as I put on the text thread, is that trade was no worse than any of the, the trades that Rivera pulled off this year already. And there was not a peep on the text threads. Can, can somebody, you know, give me that a trade, little insight on why that is? That trade was trash. You took advantage of the person that's easy to take advantage of in our league. Yeah, I, here's the way I, I look at it. And I, I mean, you know, Tommy and you and I talked about this this afternoon. Um, I don't have a vote in our league as the commissioner. Um, I would have voted that. I would have voted against that if I did have a vote. Um, I'm also the person that doesn't like to vote out trades. I think that if you two people make a trade, they deserve the trade. Um, Tommy took the time to, um, you know, pillage the, the guy that typically doesn't think too deeply into the players. Uh, but I will say this, I asked Tommy, the actual question is if somebody else was making that trade, how would you feel about it? And he said, I would probably have to let it go through, but I'd piss and moan the same way everybody else was. Cause it's not a good trade straight up. Not a good trade. You should have seen the one. He said. It is what it is. It was worse. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, here credit to Tommy. Tommy is the, uh, Tommy is the, the guy in everyone's league that will send out 150 trades. He'll throw that shit against the wall and eventually someone it'll stick. Someone like- will get one. I'm like Polly on Bumble where he just yeah. keeps swiping, keeps swiping, keeps swiping, keeps swiping, keeps swiping until he gets one of the numbers. It's a lot of, it's a lot of numbers. Tommy will throw out 150 yeah. bad trades for the hope that one person clicks that accept button. And, and it happened this week. And it typically it seems like there's two people in our league that always accept this trade. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to really believe that Tommy has found his niche for um, – no pun intended, but uh, he's he's found his uh, his his knack of taking advantage of people. So, yeah. that and that's me. But you know, enough about our league. Let's get into the segment tonight. We're gonna do our you know our normal stock rising, stock falling. We have some sit of the weeks, and we have some stream of the weeks. Uh, I'm gonna start with Cavi. This you know on this one first. We're gonna do some stock rising, and you know there's been a lot of players in the league that have been stepping their game up, especially with a lot of these injuries that are happening right now. Who knows if it's preseason and no preseason? We don't know. We'll probably never know. But, Cavi, who do you have as your stock rising player? I'm sunburned as shit, by the way. But um, So I like Robinson from uh, Jacksonville. His uh, usage is going up every single week. I'm reading off my phone because I didn't have much time to prepare because I am, like Tommy said, on vacation. Uh, that changed last week. Uh, you know, he led the team in receptions. He had eight receptions, 83 yards. And, uh, you know, he converted two goal line carries in the last two weeks. And he's going up against Cincinnati, who's allowing the second most fantasy points to running backs this week. So if he's available, I think you go out and snag him. Um, there was some worry about him initially, I think, because uh, he wasn't getting uh, – he, he wasn't the first two weeks – getting any pa- any passing yards, and, and that's kind of where he lingered. But now that he's getting those receptions, or at least got him this week, I think he's a, he's a safe bet to go out there and get after. So, yeah, and, and with Cavi's point, you know, I think you're a little behind the eight ball on this guy, right? Um, he's, he's already rostered in 86% of the league, so there's, you know, 14% uh, you know, opportunity out there in some leagues. You Let know, me ask a question real quick, sorry, because I know he's rostered a lot, but um, that being said, uh, is he someone that you guys would be interested in trying to shoot for a trade for? J- J- James M. Uh, gave me a trade, James Robinson for Dalvin <laughs> Cook straight up, and I almost laughed. Yeah, he did the same thing for uh, Drake. So he has a high – he's got a high ceiling on James Robinson because yeah, he sent yeah. me the same thing for Drake. And listen, Drake's down, but I still won't trade him for James Robinson right now. Well, well, here's James Robinson. You look at his, uh, you know, obviously before – in four weeks from now, he has a bye. His next three weeks, though, he plays Cincy, Houston, and Detroit, which are three of the worst rush defenses in the NFL. All three teams are giving up over five yards per carry from the running back. So, you know, it, it's something that if I was, you know, Jamie, maybe he gets it now, but he's throwing him out there. I bet you in two, three weeks, you guys are going to be second guessing. Not not so much you, Ed, but maybe you with Kenyon Drake. You know, he hasn't had the season that you thought he was going to have. But, you know, Paul, what do you think about Robinson? So you, I think, you, where I would think, you put him? Uh, well, I, 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 you can't 
you can't knock the hustle with James Robinson right now. Um, I, I, I'm still not a believer in the fact that, you know, I, I don't, I can't trust Jacksonville right this moment. Um, but he's putting up numbers. Um, he's one of those guys that if, if I had on my team and I wasn't anticipating him doing anything, but I can plug him in and play him like every week right now, I'd be excited about it, but he's not the kind of guy that I'm going and I'm pursuing in a trade personally. Like, cause I just, I don't know how long that will last. It could last all the rest of the year. Um, but it's very hard for me to trust Jacksonville's back backfield. And I think Paulie has some type of buyer's remorse <laughs> with Jacksonville players with DJ Chark, not living up to his uh, full potential that Paulie was hoping he would do this year. But um, no, Calf, we all like that pick. James Robinson's definitely, I, I think he's going to be a stud at, over the next three weeks for sure. But um, let's see what happens going forward. Eddie, who do you have as a stock riser this year, this week? This is a, a tough one because <clears throat> after looking around and do, reading up on uh, Seattle and their running back situation, Chris Carson got injured. His MRI came back and just said he has a, a minor sprain in his knee. But that being said, who knows how long that's going to linger? Who knows how much that's going to uh, – how they're going to limit him? And Seattle's one of the top scoring offenses right now in, in all of football. So my stock riser is Carlos Hyde. Um, there's a lot of injuries out there. Even if you pick him up and use him as a flex play for a week or two while, while there's question marks around Chris Carson, he didn't really have the best game um, this past week when Carson you know, got out. But um, I think it was 12 or four, four carries for 12 yards, and he had a catch for like 12 or 15 yards too. But – um, I think that they'll get him more involved if Carson is either limited or, you know, has to sit a, a week or two and who knows what can happen in that offense. I, he could have a couple of weeks where, you know, there's a lot of in injuries out there. And if you need a bye week filler for, or not a bye week filler, but just like a, a filler for a flex play or even an RB two possibly for a couple of weeks while some of your other banged up guys, Guys get uh, get healthy again, then I think he's a he's a stock riser right now. Yeah, and I'm smoke. My, you you had in the text thread that you kind of like Carlos Hyde. You know, as as Eddie touched on, the only scary part is 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 Carson's injury. You know, thankfully for him, it's not as severe as some would have thought. Uh, you know, after seeing him limp off the field, do you like Carlos Hyde this week as a play? Um, I think Carlos Hyde's probably going to be one of the top waiver picks. Uh, well, waivers will already be gone through by the time this gets you know played, but uh, I think he's probably one of the top waiver picks. Um, my concern for him it would be uh, Seattle's Seattle's backfield. You know, even Chris Carson himself, like he's not putting up these, you know, well, I guess he did have some stellar numbers the first two weeks, but uh, I don't know. Carlos Hyde might be like a one week play, two week play, but I mean, they're letting Russ cook. So that, <laughs> that backfield's only as good as, you know, them deciding when they want to run the ball. And at the end of the day, Russ throws four and five touchdowns a game. That's not leaving a lot for the backfield to rush in. I, I think that has a lot, a lot to do, though, with uh, Seattle's defense. Like, if their defense actually, you know, shows up one week and they're up by, you know, maybe a touchdown or 10 points or so, then I think they're going to rely on the run game a little bit. They have, they have to play, you know, they're, they're going back and forth touchdown for touchdown with the team. Yeah, well, they're playing, that's so. the thing. Their, their rushing defense is, is great, Seattle's, but their passing defense, they're, they're, they're terrible. Um, yeah. I think they're actually, believe it or not, I think it's going to be a shootout with that team a lot this year um, unless something happens and – they get that secondary figured out. We'll see. And as a Russ owner, I'm good with that. Let Russ sure. cook, baby. No doubt. So, Smoke, coming up to you for a stock riser. I know uh, I kind of like y your man here as well. You know, uh, so who do you have this week? So I got uh, T. Higgins, wide receiver from the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, so I, I kind of liked this guy about a week ago. Um, I saw some, some flash of potential in him in, two, in week two. He, uh, he had six targets. Uh, and then this week, uh, I knew something was up because they, they basically healthy scratch John Ross. And you know that that's probably spells trouble for him. Um, and T Higgins had a, had a breakout game, uh, nine targets. He had five catches for 40 yards, but he had two touchdowns. Um, you can tell Burroughs trusts him. Uh, he likes him. He's had, he, and he had some, he had some bonehead plays in the game. Uh, he had a really bad drop uh, in, in, in overtime yeah. um, that he would have actually had a lot more, um, a lot better stats than even what he did. Uh, but I think that's, you know, that's just him trying to feel his way through um, his, his, his rookie year. 
I think he's only going to get better. And, uh, you know, this goes back to what I talked about last week on the show where I'm, I'm still down on AJ green. He has not proven anything to me. As a matter of fact, I believe you drop AJ green right now. Uh, I think he's completely droppable in leagues. Um, maybe that's a hot take. I don't know, but I I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I think over the next two to three weeks, T Higgins is going to be, uh, um, he's going to be uh, in that, that talk, that conversation for uh, one of the best receivers on that team. Yeah, I, th- I think he, he's definitely building the, a rapport with, with uh, my man, Joe Burrow. You look over the last two weeks, like you said, he has 15 targets. Um, I still don't think you drop AJ Green. I think, I think again, it goes back to he was out for a season. I think he's just going to get better as the year goes on. And Joe Burrow and that offense act, actually get some things moving. Uh, offensive line picks it up. But I like T. Higgins as a play. Like you said, uh, John Ross, the healthy scratch last week. Obviously, that just means T. Higgins is going to be number three going forward unless he continues boneheaded plays and doesn't perform. But I like the start. He's definitely uh, a, a stock rising on mine. And he's only owned in 6% of leagues right now. So if, uh, if he's available and you're looking for some depth, pick him up. So let's, let's jump I in. The, ben, I, think ahead, bench, I think it's safe to bench A.J. Green for like a week or two and see what happens. I don't think you drop AJ green ever. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, are you really going to find a better streamer or flyer if you need it right off the bat, you know? No, I, I'm I listen. Like I said, that's why I think it's you know considered a hot take, but I think that when it's all said and done by week nine, when, when the Bengals have their buy, I think you're going to look back and AJ green owners are going to, that are still holding on. And we're going to go, the hell was I holding on him for this song for? Uh, he's well, not good. He's not good anymore, guys. I'm sorry. He's not good. He's not getting any connection with Burrow. You can say it's because he's been off for a year. You could say this. You could say that. He's getting. He's older. He's broken down. You watch him on the field. He's not good. Um, five catches, 36 yards. He was my. He was my. Uh, my sit of the week last week. He was my buster. He was my falling stock. And I think, as a matter of fact, if correct me if I'm wrong, me and you and Cavi right. had a bet last week. Uh, if I'm, let me, let me, let me go back in this shiny little Google doc that we have here that says Cavi bet 74 yards over. That was wrong. 36 yards for AJ green. Tommy bet me a, a touchdown out of AJ green. Maybe by week nine, he'll get one of them. He so has one. We'll, 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 we'll work on those, uh, what you guys owe later. All yeah. Right. Well, listen, Mr. Hot take with Lazard, right? Um, so don't be sitting here boasting your hot takes. Well, what, anyway. I say, what I say on Twitter and what I say on this show is different. Oh, my bad. This is where we bring the real stuff. Twitter doesn't count. This is where he brings the real stuff. So let's let's jump into, uh, you know, the stock falling here. Is is, I'll keep it with you, Paul. Um, You you know, you have a twofer here, which I I, 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 I like this twofer, right? Because it's something that uh, that one goes with the other for sure. So who do you have this week as stock falling? Um, So I went with the exact uh, box of uh, Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones. Um, I don't like either one of these guys. Tampa Bay's backfield has just become exactly what we're used to with Tampa Bay's backfield. Uh, You don't know which one of these guys you're going to want to start week to week. I'd rather have neither on my team. So I don't have that frustration, that aggravation. Um, You know, you look at the snap count in week two, Leonard Fournette had 45% of the snap count and uh, Ronald Jones had 36%. So you're like, okay, Fournette had a really breakout week. He's definitely going to take the lead in uh, week three. Um, no, no. Bruce Arian says, nah, uh not so fast. Uh, 35% of the snaps for uh, Fournette in week three and 52% of the snaps for Ronald Jones. 13 carries for 53 yards for Ronald Jones, seven carries. So collectively, collectively, they had 20 total carries on the ground. And here's the funny thing, even more so. Sean McCoy is the most targeted running back in that backfield. He has the most targets. So what, what, why do you want any of that? I stay away. And if I have them, I'm, I'm hating my life right now. Cause I, especially when you have Fournette, cause I, you just, you want to play the name, but you can't. I yeah, agree. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Can't have, we, what were you going to say on that? Well, I completely agree too. But uh, my thought is more that it, it's not necessarily a Tampa Bay thing. It's a, it's a Tom Brady thing. So like I, you've seen it, you can never trust a running back in uh, New England either. The, every week Brady kind of spreads the ball out unless there's like a, a big prominent receiver. I mean, this week, what Gronk led the team in, in targets and, and reception. So it's really hard to, uh, to really pin somebody down in, in, in a Tom Brady offense, as far as a running back goes, because it's just, you're not gonna have consistency. Things yeah. Change. No, I agree. I, I, Tom Brady obviously has probably something to do with that whole situation too, I'm sure, but it goes back. I mean, look at last year, uh, last year, they, they, they didn't get any running game going. Ronald Jones was supposed to be, and then it was 
uh, Peyton Barber was in that back. We, nobody could figure out Tampa Bay's backfield last year. We're in that same boat this year. There's just too many mouths to feed, and, and they'd rather pass the ball. Um, I don't know. Maybe this, maybe this week, we're, we'll, we'll, this week, maybe we'll see something different with uh, the, um, the the doubtful status of uh, of um, uh, Gibson. Is that who? I'm, no, it's not Gibson. Um, Godwin. Godwin. Thank you. I don't know where Gibson just came. Yeah, from. but he didn't even play last week. You had the G. Yeah, I'm saying. Had the G. So, yeah, I had the G. So no. So with Godwin possibly probably being out, uh, maybe they they try to run the ball a little bit more. But I, I agree with you, Cavi. I think Tom Brady back there. He he he's more of a. It's just not his. It's not his style. So what I'll say about this, and and I agree, is is it's a tough backfield to have, right? Until one of them emerges as a clear cut uh, number one running back on the squad. Um, so I if I owned a Ronald Jones or a Leonard Fournette, what I would do is I'd go out and trade to get the other guy. So if I have Fournette, I'm going to go out and try to get You're Ronald high. Jones. Oh, I'm not saying oh, listen. You want, you want two out. problems on your team? Let, just hear me out right is because i think there's potential there in that backfield right you obviously saw it with leonard fournette's like breakout game and again i i think it goes back to the point where uh one we have a lot of injuries here in the nfl this year so far and two is again i think once you have one guy break out in that backfield and go two consistent weeks i think they're going to be the number one guy going forward so if i were uh, one of the owners right now i'd go out and trade for the other to get both of them on my bench and have that problem right is is i'm not saying i'd start them right away i'm saying i would have that problem of trying to figure out who's going to land on my starting roster next week so you are the absolute polar opposite of what i said i'm falling on them you're obviously no, no, going i'm to not to get them this is a typical lipco brother thing going if I on here get i got them you early uh if i forget them cheap so you want two problems you want two problems on your team that neither one of them even if you have we they proved it fournette had the hot hand la- last week right he came out he had a breakout week over 100 yards rushing they gave him the ball and then this week they give him 35 percent of the snaps it doesn't make a difference a breakout game doesn't mean anything to bruce arians in that offense it's who has the hot hand in that game the first three or four carries will dictate who's going to get that who's going to get that that rap in that game i don't want to be either one of them on my team but, i wish hey, you had both of them because i, I take, wish i had both because i'd trade them to you tomorrow I'd i trade would them take right them now. But unfortunately, on your team, there's uh, you, you don't really have anything good right now to trade for. So anyway, let's go to Cav. Cav, who do you have this week as your stock falling? Uh, I got DeAndre, DeAndre Smith. Uh, Swift. That's what I said. You said DeAndre Smith. Swift. No, he said Swift. Oh, my bad. I thought he said Smith. Um, Detroit running back. I mean, obviously, we all know you want to stay away from anything that, that is a Detroit running back. But especially uh, Swift, I think – going for like coming into the season and, and especially after week one, everybody was super hot on Swift. They thought that, that he was going to be the guy there. And I don't think anybody is as far as the running back goes, but I think he's been completely phased out of their offense at this point. Um, he's not even really getting a super strong rotation in the backfield to, to get those looks and get those passes that he needs to, to be relevant. Um, he, he's got a little bit, in a PPR league, but I don't even think in a PPR league, he's worth uh, having a roster spot at this point. Um, I'm, I'm holding on to carry on just because as a flyer, if I need to throw him in there, but I just run away from uh, Detroit's backfield as much as possible. But Swift, I think a lot of people were using him as a flex and I don't think he's worth it anymore. I, I, I was actually very, very close to having my uh, riser be Adrian Peterson. He's only owned in 52% of leagues still. And, you know, going back to what Tommy said, uh, you, you have to find out a backfield that is willing to make somebody a workhorse. I still think Adrian Peterson's got it, man. They gave him 22 carries this week. Um, and, you know, he, he did well. He's 75 yards. It's nothing to shake, you know, yet, yet he's, he's serviceable. Um, More but, than serviceable. You yeah. look at his numbers, right? The guy is averaging over 4.9 yards per carry, right? Yeah. That's- I mean, he needs to get in the end zone, and I think that's the, the only issue you're going to have with that backfield is that they're, you know, if, for Adrian Peterson, I, he's the only guy on that backfield I'd want to own, but I, I think it's, you're going to struggle every week with him getting in the end zone. Um, but I almost made him my, uh, my riser. Yeah. No, and I, I agree with you, Cav, is, is DeAndre Swift and that whole backfield there with Carrion Johnson. Everybody coming into the season prior to Adrian Peterson getting picked up by the Lions – uh, after, you know, the boot from the skins or the football team, I, I'm sorry. Um, you know, everybody was high on Swift during drafts, but unfortunately, I don't know if it was after the drop in the end zone there to uh, win the game, but, you know, this week he had zero carries. That's, you know, un- unbelievable for a guy that everybody was 
pretty high on coming into draft season. So E Dog, um yep. glad you're back from your from your number two. Um yeah. who, Taco Night. Who do you have as your stock falling this week? <clears throat> I'm I'll probably get some heat for this. Um but Lamar Jackson, actually the whole Ravens offense has just been not good recently. Um, Kansas City just laid a whoop into them on Monday night. And Lamar Jackson, he's not the number one quarterback that people drafted off their draft boards this year. In our league, I don't know how other uh, scoring leagues are, but in our league, he's after three weeks, he's 13th in uh, fantasy points right now for quarterbacks. Marquise Brown, too. These is, this was kind of like a, a duo uh, for stock falling. Hollywood Brown, he has six targets in each game this year, so 18 targets total, no touchdowns. He has 42 yards and 13 yards in his last two games. That, I mean, you're not, you're not going to get much uh, receiving-wise when Lamar Jackson throw, passes for uh, 97 yards total um, in a game. So – I just think he's trying to do too much. Um, that's just what it seems like to me. Like it, it seems like when his go-to is Mark Andrews and the tight end uh, Boyle too, but especially in the red zone. But I think he's just he's trying to use his legs too much, and I think teams are starting to catch on to that and waiting for him to, you know, do a you know QB draw or some kind of run play designed for him. And it, listen, it uh, it'll work out a lot of the time, but I think teams that are starting to catch on to, to that. And I just think that they need to turn it around offensively, um, you know, all together in Baltimore, their defense is awesome, but if they want to make it to the, you know, go far in playoffs, they're going to have to uh, do something offensively. Yeah, I agree with that. And you look, and, and again, Marquise Brown, uh, Rivera was high on this guy coming in the draft this year. He drafted him as his number two behind Calvin Ridley. Uh, you look at Marquise Brown last year, he had two 100-yard games. It was week one and then week 16 were 100-yard games. Every other game in between there, he averaged 33 receiving yards a game. Uh, you know, the, I'm not, I wasn't high on Hollywood Brown. I, I'm still not high on Hollywood Brown. You look, he had a, a great first game this year. Everybody was high on him, but then he kind of fell apart. And Lamar Jackson, right, we talk about this guy all the time. And, you know, you, Ed, you hit the nail on the head. Is, is Teams are figuring him out, right? Yeah, he has that speed. But NFL linemen, linebackers, defensive backs, they have some speed too, right? And if, if they're, they have a spy on them, um, you know, he's, he's not going to be able to perform like he did. So, Smoke, what do you, what do you think about this combo? Um, I'll agree on Marquise Brown. I have never been big on him. I thought he was overdrafted this year. Uh, I'm, I'm still I – I can never be down on Lamar Jackson. He's just too, too much of a weapon. His, he's too fast. He's too good. I think he had a down week against um, a team that just is over. They're, they're out. They're better coached and they're just a better team. And with all due respect, uh, they have his number. Uh, Kansas City and uh, Mahomes has Lamar Jackson's number. I think it's a mental thing on him. Um, they figured him out, but there's not many other teams in the league that can say that. So uh, I'm still up on Lamar, down on Marquise. I think Marquise is. Uh, I, I I think he's been a flopper for two years now for the t- for fantasy owners. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. So um, let's let's move on to our sit of the week. This is somebody that uh, you know you, you might be rostering. We're, we're not talking superstars, unless maybe you have an inside tip of something that we don't know. But um, Paul, let's let's go to you with with who you have this week as your sit of the week. So I think mine is a superstar, and uh, I think from a quarterback position, you know, uh, you could realistically bench superstar quarterbacks because. We talked about it before. Eddie just mentioned it about Lamar Jackson. I think, you know, what, how far down is he right now as a starting quarterback? Uh, quarterbacks are easy to stream week to week. But I'm going to go Cam Newton as my sit of the week this week. Uh, we just got done talking about the Kansas City Chiefs and how they shut down um, Lamar Jackson. Cam Newton, uh, he didn't look very good uh, this week when uh, he faced – uh, the Raiders, who doesn't not nearly have uh, anywhere near this a good a defense as the Kansas City Chiefs do, um, he he was he was rather like especially like for me Cam Newton is is most effective from fantasy value when he's running the ball and he's doing those two yard uh, little scumbag runs in and you know he's he's vulturing all the running backs 
from uh, New England, but he seems to find uh, he seemed to find a little guy named Rex Burkhead that he likes, um, and I think they're going to continue to keep using him. And I think Cam, uh, I think he has an off week. I think that Kansas City wraps uh, has him has him wrapped up. I'm not saying you know long term Cam is still the guy. You still love to have him on your team, Eddie. I know you got him. I know you love him. Uh, but this week, I would probably I, I would I would be looking for better options out there if it's just me. Yeah, I, I have Matt Stafford on my bench, and I may play Stafford. Um, I know they, I think they have uh, the Saints, but I'm I'm nervous about Cam after seeing what the the Chiefs did against um, Lamar, and he's similar, and maybe not as agile as you know Lamar, and not as um, I don't know shifty as he's he once was, physical. maybe like ten years ago. But um, yeah, I just I. I I think that I'm going to probably play Stafford over Newton this week. Yeah. I, I, I can't buy in on that. I like him this week versus Kansas city. You know, this is going to be a, a dog fight for sure is, is Bill Belichick and the Patriots defense is one of the best in the NFL. I think they're going to slow down the Kansas city offense. Uh, you know, you talked about a chess match amongst coaches with Baltimore and, and uh, you know, Kansas city this past Monday night. Uh, I think it's going to be tenfold this Monday. I think Cam Newton, you know, rushes another one in and has a solid game. I'm not, I'm not saying he's going to have, you know, 30, 40 fantasy points, but I think he puts up good numbers. E-Dog, who do you have as sit of the week? And I know you're going to, you're going to dog me for this. I like this. Melvin, Melvin Gordon. That Broncos offense is abysmal. And they're on their third quarterback now in four weeks. Well, I guess he came in this past week, so three weeks. They're on their third quarterback after Drew Lock. Drew Lock, sorry, um, and Driscoll got yanked. Now they're on Brett Ripien. I don't even know how to Rippin. say his name. That's Mark Rippin's son. Remember Mark Rippin? Eddie was just Rippin. I know Cal Rippin. Yeah, no, that's oh, Ripkin. Yeah, it's Ripkin. Uh, Mark Rippin. I, I'm, I'm obviously a bit older. Yeah, than you guys. I know. Is well, it his nephew? Yeah, his nephew. All right, well, I'm just throwing out false claims. Yeah, he's still, got a, he's, he's still got Super Bowl pedigree, though, right? Yeah. He can want a Super Bowl. Ripping bongs, maybe. Nice. But, well played. Um, no, uh, but Fantastic. Melvin Gordon, he had, a, he had a decent first two weeks. Um, but now, I mean, Cortland Sutton, I don't know what his deal is. I know he's been, he's been banged up. Um, Noah Fant, he's, he's probably been their, their bright light um, on their offense. I'm not sure what he did this week. I didn't look that part up, but um, Melvin Gordon, he had eight carries for 26 yards this week. That's not, that's not the RB two flex play that you want. Um, and I have David Johnson and my sit of the week because of my, I'm, I'm using this as my team right now. I'm playing David Johnson over Melvin Gordon as my flex. Not to mention Eddie, uh, like Melvin Gordon was, Basically, it was a, the week that he was supposed to have the whole backfield to himself. Yeah, because Lindsey, um, I mean, and, he, and he Lindsay did looks like she's going to be back. He, yeah, I said she. <laughs> Lindsey <laughs> looks like he. That's what happens when you have a sister named Lindsey. Uh, Lindsey, uh, Phil Lindsey looks like he's going to be back this week, so he won't. He'll be. He'll have to, you know, part that backfield. And with all, Phil, Lindsey gets most of the most of the third down work. So I, I agree with you. I think Melvin Gordon is a huge sit this week. Yeah, and I mean, until I see some life in that Broncos offense, maybe this uh, this new kid will bring some life to it but um i'm i'd be hesitant to play melvin gordon until i saw something so this is why i disagree with you ed if you look he's already played the two toughest rush defenses in the nfl with the pittsburgh steelers and the tampa bay buccaneers he's averaging 4.2 yards per carry even playing two of those best defense in the nfl you look at the the jets rush defense is, is basically like swiss cheese you know they're giving up over four four and a half yards per carry against the running back um i i just i i can't sit this guy right you drafted this guy to start him i think you look at his numbers like i said over 4.2 yards of carry he i they're going to feed him 30 times, 30, 30 times between the two running backs, at least 30, 30 to 40 times. So I'd, even I'll, if Philip Lindsay's mixed in there, it's going to be obviously Melvin Gordon show over Lindsay and he's going to get the majority of the touches, but that's just my take on that. 
I'm just going to quickly just say this. Um, I don't think you drafted Melvin Gordon to have to start him. Uh, he was drafted in fourth, fifth round this year. But more than that, I think we, we have a case of what the Steelers went through last year, right, with James Conner and, and that backfield, Benny Snell. Like, they couldn't get anything going because their offense and their quarterback situation was just so bad. So if you don't really have a threat behind you, you just – push everybody up in the box. I just can't see how Melvin Gordon can get going. And uh, again, with, with Philip Lindsay coming back this week, if he does come back this week, that just cuts into his touches to begin with even more so. So I, 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 there's no way there's not better options out there right now. Yeah, I disagree. I think, you know, like Eddie said, they're on their, what, third starting quarterback this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I, I think I think my stream of the week. I, I know we're, we're, not, we're not that at that segment yet, but I might, I might switch to the Jets defense. Yeah, oh, I, well, here's my thing. I'm not taking a single thing on Thursday night ever again. I sent that out in a tweet yesterday, last week. I said, if, if you don't have an absolute lockdown must start on, on a Thursday night game, stay away from it. The fact that we have a college game this year, this week, is just embarrassing. Like, this Thursday night game is such – I won't even watch it. It's so bad. The Jets in, in Denver with their third quarterback, yeah. it's so bad. There's not a starting – there's not a person in fantasy that, goes, that, that should be played this week. On Thursday night, Melvin Gordon. Besides Jets Gordon. defense, and maybe the Jets Gordon. defense. I play Melvin Gordon as well because the Jets defense is that. Bad. I might play the, actually better than that. I might play Denver's defense. So maybe just play both defenses. I'll take I'll take Melvin Gordon has more points than T Higgins this week. I'll let me that. know. Let me know if you want that. So anyway, so moving on. Obviously, you have uh, two two sit mogos and one one stardom. Um, let's move to Cav. Cav, who do you like this as your start of the week? Yeah. So it's since, it's the, since this is the last sit start, of the week, right? So sit of the last week. Sit of the yep. week. Sorry. So uh, since this is, since I'm the last one going sit of the week, we can roll this right into uh, yep into the next Extreme. one. So right off the bat, um, Jarek McKinnon, sit him. He's no good. He was overhyped. Tommy tried trading me to today, trying to rip me off, trading me Jarek McKinnon like it matters. Um, now I, on the other hand, genius went out last week and picked up. Uh, Jeff Wilson Jr. instead, you know, knowing that he was going to be the guy that puts points on the board. McKinnon's historically completely inaccurate. He's never put up 10 points more than twice in a row, or never done it twice in a row, rather, in fantasy football. He's, uh, you know, has one of the lowest ratings from fantasypros.com for consistency. Um, He only saw 14 carries this week and four targets. He's a bum. Um, So let's go right into stream. Harsh. Kaz, I just want to correct you on one thing. You said he hasn't had double digit before fantasy the, points before in this year. Two weeks. Before this yeah, year. Yeah, he's had double digit fantasy points every every week this year. The, I said before this year. He's before this year, you said. Yeah. Okay. Before this year, he's never had more than 10. That points. sunburn glowing off your face blinded my ears. So. Well, those ears get some surgery. I don't know where to go with that. But anyway, <laughs> so going right into the stream of the week, uh, Jeff Wilson. Picked him up this week, uh, you know, last year on six carries, the guy had four touchdowns. That seemed a little appealing to me, did a little more research. Uh, I liked what I saw, put up 22 fantasy points for me in this, uh, for me this week. And I think he's going to be the guy moving forward um, until, obviously, um, Coleman Moster. and uh, Moser come back. But uh, that's not looking likely for this week. So, Wilson, uh, you know, he's, he's supposed to be the goal line pounded in power back, and he was the receiving back this week. A lot of his yards came from, uh, you know, those targets across the middle. He broke one for 54 yards for a touchdown. So he's my stream of the week again this week. Uh, he'll be in my flex. So that's what I suggest to everybody as well. So, Cav, I'll, I'll uh, you know, I just had that bet with Paul, Melvin Gordon versus T. Higgins. I'll do a bet against you, Jarek McKinnon versus Jeff Wilson Jr. this week. Ooh, can I double down? Who are you taking? Oh, I 100% take Wilson. Oof, I'm in for both. Good. So, yeah, so, Kev, I, listen, we'll see. That 49ers backfield, you're especially – You're just trying to justify a trash trade. Most start, most start and uh, the, I, might be back, back this week. We'll see now. what happens there. Let's get the E-Dog on his uh, stream of the week. I know this is uh, big Eagles fans all over the world. Can't wait for this, this one, Ed. Only because that there's uh, – I don't know what Jimmy G's status is. I know he's been banged up, but I know there's a lot of underperforming quarterbacks out there. Nick Foles look good in their comeback. I know it was Atlanta. They've been – it looks like they've been uh, – or it seems like they give up, you know, two or three touchdown uh, comebacks every week to, to teams in the second half. But Nick Foles look good. Um, he threw 
three TDs when he replaced uh, Trubisky. I don't even know how he won or he didn't win the job over Trubisky to begin with. Um, I, I I think he'd be a solid streamer this week if you do have a, a you know, even Tannehill. I know Paul Paulie was high on Tannehill last week. He came back down to earth this week, and they they have a tough uh, opponent with the Steelers, I believe. Or no, the Vikings. I'm sorry. So they don't have a tough opponent. Um, but uh, but like Rivers, Wentz, if you drafted these guys late and try to load up on you know running back and wide receiver studs early on, they're not performing the way you thought they were going to. And I think that Nick Foles would be a good streamer this week. Um, they're playing the Colts. I get that. It's not the the Falcons secondary that he's going to be thrown against, but we saw what he did with in the past with the Eagles. I don't understand why this guy's a backup. Like he he seems to have like a second year when the game's on the line. He he seems to step up, and I think there's worse options this week than Nick Foles as your quarterback. So I'll I'll, I'll jump in really quick. Um, I'll tell you why Nick Foles is a backup. It's because it's what he does. He comes in relief for people, right? He's not a starter in the league. And I could tell you, this is the worst week if you want to stream a person to stream Nick Foles because he's playing Indianapolis's defense who gives up the least amount of points to fantasy quarterbacks. They haven't given up a single quarterback yet. In three weeks, they haven't – not no quarterback has thrown for more than 173 yards against them. Who do they, who do they, who do they play, though? Um – they played Minnesota, they played the Jets, and they played Jacksonville. So, yeah, I guess it. It's pretty soft, but it doesn't matter. 173 yards, like, that's that's not a lot. Like, if, if I said, like, 250, I can get that. But 173 yards, like, they're still NFL quarterbacks. Gardner Minshew throws for 300 yards against teams. Kirk Cousins, $75 million. Does he throw for more than 113 yards against you? Um I don't know. I'm just saying. I think that uh, this is not the right week. I, I'm. 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 A, listen. I, I'm. I got the heart for Nick Foles. I, I think I agree with you in the fact that dude should get more chance than Trubisky ever. He should have gotten the starting role from the jump. I think he's a better quarterback. But I will disagree with you respectfully on streaming him this week personally. Yeah, I like him going forward too. We, I, I, I do like him going forward. I think he brings value to the whole Chicago Bears offense and and those players that you drafted, like uh, Allen Robinson and uh, you know David Montgomery. He definitely brings value there. I even, think if, I, I mean, even with out, Nick, you know, Nick Foles, I think uh, Anthony Miller. I know he's he's available in a lot of leagues. I think he'd be a, a good pickup if 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 with the Nick Foles going forward, if they you know announce him that like he's going to be the starter going forward for a while, then I think Anthony Miller would be a good wide receiver three or four. Yeah. Under I, just, I just dropped him. So he's probably going to be a great wide receiver. I agree. <laughs> I agree with Paul. Um, I think he's the greatest uh, backup quarterback of all time, but I don't think he's a starter. And I think he falls apart when he becomes a starter. Yeah. Fair love enough. It. Tear up Eddie. So mm-hmm. anyway, so let's, let's get to our last stream of the week, Paul. We saved the, the worst for last. And we're talking about your fantasy team. Um, yeah. Not your uh, fantasy opinion. Who do you have for this week's stream of the week? So my stream of the week is going to be Scotty Miller uh, out of Tampa Bay, wide receiver. Uh, I think with, uh, as we talked about a little earlier on the show, with Chris Godwin probably going to be out this week. Um, Scotty Miller is a great, a great little play. Uh, he had you know, three catches, 83 yards in uh, this past week with five targets. He led the team in receiving. He was second or third, I think, on – yeah, he was third in targets behind Gronk and, and Godwin this week. But um, he seems to be getting a connection with uh, with Tom Brady. And if you've learned anything in 20 years of Tom Brady, like once you get a connection with him and once you get that, like, you know, you, you get that timing right with him, um, the sky's the limit for this guy. So I think with Godwin out, it's a perfect time to to, to, to play him. I think he, uh, he plays the Chargers. So I believe it's um, – the Chargers secondary, the Chargers defense has been decimated over the last like two weeks. They're a complete disaster. So I think that they're suspect. And I think that it's going to be, you know, Tampa Bay likes to throw the ball. We just talked about that earlier too. They don't care about the running the ball. They will throw and throw and throw. So it's not even game script. That's going to stop him from having, you know, seven or eight catches for 90 yards. Uh, personally, I think that he even pops in a touchdown this week. So I think Scotty Miller is a great play. And I, I would put him in my lineup if I if I had a if I had a tough matchup if I had um, you know any of a if I had Anthony Miller as my starting wide receiver this week against Indy I would take Scotty Miller over him. I yeah I, I like this play. 
I agree. I have Scotty Miller. Um, the only problem I have with it, and I'm going to play him this week. I'm going to sit John Brown and play him instead. But I think that um, the only problem with it is that the last time Godwin was out, um, Scotty Miller didn't get anything. So that was the problem. He was supposed to be the big, uh, you know, guy going into that week too, and he put up uh, a goose egg, I think. So that's that's my only thing. Was that was that with Tom Brady as the quarterback? Yeah, it was week two. Week so, two. Uh, yeah, it was when Godwin was out. Yeah, oh, it's when he got out. Yeah, but he went out in like the end of the game, right? No, he was out the whole. He didn't play. He didn't play in that game. He got Godwin didn't play week two. No. No, oh. week one, Godwin got a concussion. Week two, he didn't. Tell I don't have Godwin on my line in my roster. Um, and then uh, so what happened from there is that he, you know, went in and and they had they were able to focus on him. He didn't have Godwin draw the coverage, so that's how. How frustrated are you right now if as you, if you're a Godwin owner? That's just got to be very hit. frustrated. Ugh. Or a Julio owner. Not as frustrated as I'm about to be with this. Uh, I'll, I'll take Julio over Godwin right now, 100%. Yeah, I would too. Yep. So, yeah, I think we all agree. Scotty Miller might be a good play there in a stream of the week. Might get that touchdown that everybody's been looking for. But uh, that wraps up our show for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Give us a listen to on Sound SoundCloud iTunes. You can check us out on Twitter. Always, we're always, uh, especially Paul's active there now, and YouTube for sure. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And thanks for stopping by. We always appreciate it. Have a great night. Later.